unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 6. The Bible says, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, and without blood, the Bible says, which he offered for himself and for the errors of people, the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while at the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the surface perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which would stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and kind ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Somebody say reformation. Now, I pray that may God give you understanding. May the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light, like Paul says, that you will know. Hallelujah. Because without the flooding of light, you will not know. Knowledge comes because of a sort of illumination. The eyes of your understanding have to see what I'm sharing tonight and get it. Because if you do, you'll not struggle in this life. God has not ordained us to struggle on this earth. Praise God. I know that some people say so because of where they are at in the word. But I believe by the word of God when he said that you shall have joy unspeakable full of glory. He meant it. When he said that it is the blessing of God that maketh rich. And he, the Bible says, he addeth no sorrow to eat. He addeth no sorrow to eat. You understand? God has not ordained you. To carry a blessing and then have sorrow with it. That's not God. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's the father of lights from whom all good gifts come. There is no shadow of turning within him. That's what the Bible says. All good and perfect gifts. Every good and perfect gift. The Bible says it is from above and cometh down from the father of lights. And he says in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All good and perfect. The Bible calls him the high priest of good things to come. Hallelujah. That is why our expectation is sure. Because we know what he has spoken in his word pertaining our lives. I made up my mind. That's why it's called the good news. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why it's called the good news. Because there is an answer there. There is an answer there. Shout hallelujah. You know when the Bible says that men are corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. It means that Corruption in the word, corruption of men in the word begins when men complicate the simple things of the spirit. Hallelujah. It begins from conversations such as, do you think it's easy to fall in the anointing? Do you think it's easy to have money? Do you think it's easy to have a marriage? Do you think it's easy to graduate? It's not easy. It's not easy according to what terms. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul's fear. Lest the serpent beguile Eve through the subtility that their mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Not of Christ, in Christ. See, the simplicity in Christ is different from the simplicity of the Christ. No, there is a subtility of the Christ, but a simplicity in the Christ. You understand? You know, it's people who see us from outside, they don't understand us. The gospel is foolishness. To them which are perishing. But to us, hallelujah, who have received Jesus, it is life. Somebody shout hallelujah. But you don't expect them to understand you when they are not in this thing. It is foolishness to them. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. That's the difference. So there's a simplicity in Christ. But he's a complexity when they see him from afar, because they are not in him. The carnal man, the Bible says, cannot discern. He cannot receive 
the things of the spirit. He says, for they are spiritually designed. The Amplified says, the natural man, the physical, non-spiritual man. The Bible says, it does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the spirit. For they are folly. They are meaningless. They are nonsense to him. And the Bible says, and he's incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing and understanding and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually designed and estimated and appreciated. When you're spiritual, and I tell you A, B, C, you understand it. In 1 AD, for those of you who are read church history, you realize the time comes when Christianity becomes a threat. They've tarried into Jerusalem, and the Spirit has come on them, and many are gone at Antioch, where there was much teaching, and they call them Christians. God did call them, men called them. But you see, Christian, they are like Christ. They were healing the sick. They were casting out devils. They were cleansing lepers. They were doing everything that Christ had promised. For he had said it in his word. That you see greater things shall you do than these ones. For I go to the Father. They had gotten hold of the promise of God. And they were doing the works of God. And what happens? The story tells us one emperor called Nero. He starts to see the church as a threat. Are you following me? And then they start falsely accusing Christians during that time. And one of the accusations was incest. That Christians practice incest. And I know why they say they practice incest. Because you're walking with a little lady and then you meet a Roman guy and you tell him, oh, this is Sister Rita. Oh, Sister. Then a few weeks later, you're marrying Sister Rita and they're like, but he, he, he's, he's marrying his sister. It is foolishness to them which are perishing. You understand? And then there was frivolous accusations, even to the extent of saying that Christians were cannibalists. They used to eat people. Why? Because they used to find people having Holy Communion. And a man says, take this, my body. Woo! And the guy says, and drink my blood. And the guy says, you understand? So drinking blood, eating body, and like, these guys are even eating living beings. Because the gospel is foolishness to them which are perishing. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So don't think that everything that you speak spiritually, everybody understands it. No. I have a relative of mine, thank God is born again now. He used to ask me, but when you guys are speaking, what do you mean by shikara baba bakusha baba baba kasha? What do you mean by braka baba baba shokora baba baba? What is shokora baba baba? What is shokora baba baba? Oh my God. Most holy faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. He that speaketh in tongues, the Bible says he buildeth himself up. So when you feel like you're down, you shirobo, you draw from those wells. For he says counsel in a man is as deep waters. Hallelujah. But only that man with understanding can draw it out. How do you draw it out? By rako, broza, kapando, shakara, rira, kazo, koba. You understand what I'm saying? And then you're, you're passing the street and be like, but why is she speaking in tongues? You understand? Sometimes Christians look like they are crazy. In the time when they expect us to be crying, we are laughing. Hallelujah. In the times when they expect us to be sad and, and frustrated, we, we are celebrating. Hallelujah. And then you read a scripture that says, count it all joy. Yeah, count it all joy when diverse trials and temptations befall you. You understand? You're going through stuff, but you're telling God, mm, shaka rabba. Thank you, Jesus. What are you up to? For our light afflictions, which are but for a moment. He says they cannot be compared to the weight of glory that should be revealed or will be revealed. While we look not at the things that are seen, for the things which are seen by carnal men which see are temporal. But he says, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. You wake up in the morning and they fire you. Instead of fainting, you go eat yourself some ice cream because you know who your provider is. The Bible says that. That's what it says. My God, my God, not the government. My God, my God shall supply. Oh, oh, according to your wallet, according to your economy, according to your cousin's sister's money, your uncle's auntie who is in America. No, he says according to his riches and glory in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. One of my boys one time went to a hospital. They diagnosed him of a silly disease. The guy called me laughing. I said, this is the gospel. <laughs> Apostle, that I have this. Can you? <laughs> I said, huh? 
Did they say so? Say, ah, ha. The guy starts laughing. I understood he was in faith. Even me, I started, ah, ha, ha, ha. It's foolishness. And we understand. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I know who I have believed. Tell your neighbor, I know who I have believed. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Now, men exist on the face of the earth with the knowledge of Theos, God. But the Bible tells us that they have a partial sort of knowledge regarding that God. That same Bible tells you and I that until the time of reformation, the Holy of Holies was not a revelation to them. It was an experience only for the high priest which went there on behalf of these people. And all they used to do to pay obeisance and respect and honor, the true representation of their piety was in diverse washings and cleansings, carnal ordinances, and these drinkings and funny things that were imposed on them until a time of reformation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now the Greek word reformation, diothorsis, the Greek word reformation, diothorsis, right? Reformation is not a new experience in the faith. In fact, the literal word there, in the physical sense, it means to make straight, to restore something to its natural normal condition. To rectify something that has gone off course. Without the spirit and mind of reformation, we return to the very things we have broken. We build the very things we have broken. We own up a certain sense of transgression that is not simply stealing ice cream and eating candy on a day you're not supposed to eat candy. It's deeper than that. Because some people don't understand that to whom much is given, same responsibility, much is required. And the offense also is counted on a man which knoweth to do but doeth not. This is now deeper than just don't steal, don't kill. No, no, no. Go beyond that because no Christian is expected in that life. But transition through that and then get into the responsibility. of, like For example, the Bible says, let, let us get a hold of that which we have taught, which we have learned, which we have established. Least we, we lose it and not get a full reward. This is a man of God telling you that the fulfillment of our reward comes when we get a hold of those things which we have heard. Least at any time they should sleep. You understand what I'm saying? We give the most honest, honest heed to those things. There is offense. In Thessalonians, it tells you that when love does not abound in knowledge and judgment, the Bible says we do not examine the excellent things. And if we cannot examine the excellent things, the Bible says we have offense on the day of Christ. That's why our love abounds in, in knowledge and judgment. You don't just say, oh, I love God. I love this individual. What is your knowledge of love? What is your judgment of love? How do you reconcile your spiritual experiences of what you call love with your intellect? Because if spiritual experiences don't reconcile with intellect, then you cannot carry judgment. Judgment is the true qualification of maturity in a believer. Maturity is not age. Maturity is the ability to cipher, to know the difference, the wisdom to know the difference. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, he says, I pray that your love may abound yet more in knowledge and in all judgment that you might approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Here, he's holding them accountable of offense because they cannot approve the most excellent. We're not talking about the good. We're not talking about the acceptable. We're talking about the excellent things of God. Again, to whom much is given, much is what? He's required. If a normal guy woke up in the morning and went and drank himself silly, they would say, oh, hey, this guy drinks a lot. But if the president of a nation got himself drunk and went in front of television to address people, he would have more offense than the man who did it. Why? Because under him is a great responsibility. Who understands what I'm saying? To whom much is given, much is required. But you see, when you understand the realm of faith, you don't first understand what is given for you to take responsibility. You, by faith, start taking responsibility of what you believe, affirming your spirit to be given to you by God. And as you continue to believe that, the confirmation of that manifestation starts to follow through. Who has understood what I just said? 
It's like you cannot say, let me wait when I'm rich, then I'll do things rich people do. Or let me wait when I'm the president and the minister to do things president are supposed to do. No. Even while you're not yet, you do that. Hallelujah. We preached to two people like we are preaching to 10,000 people. It was the same breath. It was the same anointing. It was the same shout. It was the same scream. It's still as crazy now as it was then, even crazier. But you see, we did not preach like we're preaching to two people. We preached with the responsibility of thousands. You understand what I'm saying? When you're dealing, deal like a person who is rich. When you're talking, talk like a person who is rich. Don't wait to be rich and then start talking. You know, what I'm saying? she got money, now she's walking like rich people. No, that, that, is a, that is a silly mentality. No, start walking rich before you get the money. Hallelujah. Who has understood what I just said? The communication of your faith becomes effectual. Hallelujah. You see, listen, this is a simple principle. He is the God that calleth the things that be not as though they are. That's the way of God. He calls you a minister when you're not yet. Woo! He calls you a doctor when you're not yet. Woo! He calls you a rich man when you're not yet. Hallelujah. How can you call yourself poor? When the God who creates, he says that, I have met thee a father of many nations before whom he believed. Abraham believed God. While the Sarah is dead, he's dead. But the guy says, ah, I've made you. And the Bible says, he believed him. Even the God who quickeneth the dead and calleth these things which be not as though they were. How does he quicken the dead? By calling the things that be not as though they are. They need to convince you you're poor. <laughs> do, do I have a witness? But some of you, you don't even need conviction. You, you are already convinced. You even say, ah, ah, these days, suppose the sun is shining only my direction. Whee! Praise God. You don't need to have money to be rich. Hello, somebody. I said, you don't need to have money in your pocket to be rich. No, but you need to be rich to have money. Who has understood what I just said? Who has understood what I just said? That's the way of the spirit. He call it the things that be not as though they were. He didn't live in your time series. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever, yesterday, tomorrow, they're all present to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, in that mind, and I'm going to go into something so deep here. Please don't lose me. In that mind, I want you to understand this. That you see, God begins from perfection. Are you hearing me? He begins from perfection. He begins at perfection. Certain things get messed up in the middle and people think that that's where God began. No, God didn't begin in the mess. He begins from perfection. This perfection and maturity in God is what ordains all things before their time. When he says, Whoa, your God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works. He says, for which you are ordained before time that you should walk in them. Do you know what it means? Do, do you know what that means? Think about it for a moment. Amplify it. He says, for we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those things. Listen, those good works which God predestined, planned before, beforehand for us. The Bible says, we are taking parts which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. He said, Woo, living the good life. He said, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Somebody say, I live a good life. Say it again and say, I live a good life. He has prearranged for me a good life. I'm excited for your future. I said, I'm excited. Okay, me, me, let me tell myself. I'm excited for my future. Because he has prearranged these days for a good life. When I wake up in the morning, I say, now oh God, what am I going? No, 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 no. I call the things that be not as though they are. I don't need to look at my bank account to be excited. Hallelujah. I don't need for somebody to call me at 10 a.m. for me to be excited. Uh -uh. The miracle is not when they call me at 10. The miracle is when he prearranged. Wake up with that attitude every morning. Me, I wake up sometimes and I say, uh-huh, what are you going to be suffering? <laughs> sometimes I even be shy and I'm like, oh God, what are you going to do? Oh, you understand it? Sometimes you have to shy yourself a bit. I mean, I, 
am ordained for a good life. Bana is a second of Kubona. Rubegana Bigani. No, you, you can suffer if you are there, and for you, you want suffering. But me, <laughs> I have a prearranged life that I'm walking in every day, and it's a good one. Hallelujah. It's a good life. My children are blessed. My marriage is blessed. My ministry is blessed. My, everything I do, everything I touch, and I tell myself every day, and nothing can convince me otherwise. It does not mean that I don't wake up sometimes, and everything around me is contrary to my faith. Hallelujah. But I know what to do when everything is contrary. I look not at the things which are seen, for I know that they are they're temporal. They're only but for a moment. They cannot be compared to the weight of glory. That means with every problem that surrounds you, God is saying, the blessing is bigger. Tell your neighbor the worst has already happened. And that's the truth. The worst has already happened. The worst on your life has already happened. The worst has already happened. If you made it through and you're still alive. I don't know who I'm talking to. I didn't come to encourage you. No, no, no. I, I came to, to remind you of who you are. The worst has already happened. No, the worst has already happened. You wake up every morning and look to that weight of glory. You, even if it means releasing and releasing to the salmon until it sinks in your head. This is your life. The worst has already happened. Tell your neighbor, the worst has already happened. The worst has already happened. It has already happened. It is past tense. And, and think about it. Every challenge in your life is past tense. Think about it. It's past tense. Every challenge in your life is past tense. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, God has prearranged a life for you. Question is, why do some people live a life of struggle and strife and turmoil and pain and everything else in the middle? And then some live that life and die that way. And then, of course, we coin doctrines like, you know, it was God's plan. <laughs> no. No. It wasn't God's plan. God's plan and idea was he gave you his word. That was his plan. The master plan Christ. And he told you I have given you him choose. Hallelujah. Do you know how many people are going through things and they have accepted them? Some even think that it's supposed to be part of their story to be the way they are. Some don't even know how to come out. Principles upon principles. Precept upon precept. God is revealing to you that your problem is knowledge. Nothing else. He says, for my people perish because they don't pray for a lack of knowledge. He said, I don't know. Some of you think you're going to go to a man of God. They cast out devils. Then they prophesy. Then they encourage you. Then they scream. All of that at the end of the day will take you back to this one thing. Knowledge. Dodge it. Fly. Flip. Go up. Go down. The word will be waiting for you. It will be waiting. You can't run away from the word of God. We cast out devils. But you see, where do we get the power? We prophesy. But where do we get the grace? We teach and, and heal the sick. But where do we get the grace? The word. Now, if you know this is the source, what are you looking for? I've seen empty heads on prayer mountains. Who said that you ain't Koko? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Some guy was on a mountain saying, I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. I'm not a chicken, I'm an eagle. I'm not a Who told him he was a chicken? Who, what was he who was he trying to convince that, <laughs> that he's an eagle? I know who I am. Tell your neighbor, I know who I am. I'm a child of the most high. I'm a son of faith. Not a child of faith. You see, some people don't read the Bible. Do you realize the Bible calls them sons of Abraham? The hills. The spiritually mature of Abraham. 
not the children, but the sons of Abraham. You understand? They are the mature of Abraham. They are the mature of faith because Abraham is the representation of faith. He says in Hebrews, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Elders is not age. No, people who had matured in understanding faith. Tell your neighbor crazy faith. Uh, are you following me? Now let me show you a mystery. Let me give you an, an idea of this reformation I'm talking about. The many things that let me give you an example. In Genesis chapter 4 verses 11, some of you know the story of Cain and Abel. You remember? Cain killed Abel and then God comes to him. Uh, where is your brother? He says, am I my brother's keeper? Da, 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 da. And then eventually, in the 11th verse, God tells Cain that thou art cast from the earth. In fact, the literal Hebrew is by the earth. And I want to explain that. Which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And the next verse says, when thou tillest the ground, listen, it shall not henceforth yield unto you her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond thou shalt be in the earth. When a man is a beggar, when a man is a vagabond, when a man is a fugitive and they're looking for him, the land is not yielding substance to him. Who is following? When the man sees it, he tells God in the next verse, he says, Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He said, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And the next verse says, and behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Because when the earth turns against man, people kill you. You start looking like a target to kill. Can you think about it for a second? Let me tell you. When the land agrees with you, they don't just kill you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not just slain by men. The people who die, they're not just killed by men. You understand? God has not ordained you to die under the hand of another man. Refuse that in the mighty name of Jesus. It will never be hard on your life that somebody broke into your house and killed you. You were driving and they shot you. They gunned you down far from you. He says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land, not the bad of the land. I have not ordained for the bad of the land. It's not my portion. It's not my story. It will never happen. Tell your neighbor, it's not my story. It will never happen. It will never happen. It's not even something you should even think about it happening. It's not your story. Some of you, every time you walk expecting to be killed, you suspect it. Somebody can, you understand? No, 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 no. Refuse it in Jesus' name. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. God introduces a very important aspect in the principle of blessing on the earth. Right? He tells us that there are principles he has attached to the ground, the earth, the land that respond to the blessing upon your life on how you deal with the land. Who has understood? And in this instance here, the mistake Cain did is he killed a true worshiper. Do you understand? God told him, if you had done well, don't you know that you would have been accepted? If, if you had done well, don't you know that you would have been accepted? Accepted also. God is telling Cain that there are things you don't cross and one of which is killing an innocent life. A worshiper. I mean, he, he messed with a man who was truly worshipping. You understand? That's why I feel sorry for people who fight men who worship God. The land will not yield its fruit toward you. You will be a vagabond and fugitive on the earth. Don't fight a man who serves God a certain way. Don't. Don't. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. The first example of death. Are you hearing me? Land sought vengeance. This was land's story. God says the earth, the earth, the earth judges you. Because it has tested blood. 
God didn't say, I have cursed you. No, he cannot curse and bless. But there was a principle that held man on the earth. That's why at one particular point when rebellion comes through man, the Bible says he regretted why he had put man on earth. Because partly he knows that even the ground you're standing on can create an enmity on your life when you don't understand how the word of God works. Let me go a bit deeper. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 21. The Bible says there are three things the earth is disquieted and for which it cannot bear. Now, listen, these are things even the earth turns against. Eh? One of them is for a servant when he reigns, a fool when he's filled with meat, a woman, an odious woman when she's married, and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. To be continued. But let's go to that first statement. Now, let's go back to the first statement. The Bible has spoken about a servant, a slave. A ser He's talking about a servant spirit when he reigneth. He says that thing disquiets and discomforts the earth. When a servant is in a certain glory. You know reigning here means glory. Now here servant, he means of a, an enslaved mentality. He means of an enslaved mentality that is blessed. The earth is disquieted when a man with an enslaved mentality is blessed. Let me explain. You, you've heard of the story how the Bible says, for we have seen uh, slaves on horses, servants on horses and princes on feet, right? When the Bible called you royal priesthood, you escape the place of slavery and servanthood. You are royalty. You are royalty. Your life is supposed to be like royalty. Whether you want it or not. Don't act it to become it. No, you are it already. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now I'm going to go a bit deeper here. In Galatians 4, chapter 1, if you give me the Amplified, he says, now I say that as long as an inheritor or heir is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave. Or a servant, though he is the master of the estate. Now I want you to follow where I'm going. Joint heirs with Christ, being blessed with every spiritual blessing, the very presence in Christ Jesus, uh, given all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ. All of these are the fulfillment of what God has spoken upon our lives as the true inheritors of Christ and this dispensation of present truth. But he said, if you are a child, if you are a babe, if you are an appeals, you're like a slave. The very word in Proverbs for servant is the very word here for slave. They're not far from each other in meaning. You understand what I'm saying? Have you seen people who have gotten money and they still have a slave mentality? How they look like when they have money? Who, do I have a witness? Have you ever seen it? Do you understand what I'm saying? And then they start to do things like they've just seen money. They, have, have you been around such people? When they were still poor, they were humble. When they get money, they dwell in the light which no man can approach. That's a slave mentality. That's a slave mentality. Some of you have, have, have read slave trade and slavery. You saw how many years ago our black people were taken to the coasts and islands and, and you know, on the shores of America and, and all through. And up to today, some of the black men there, even though they are liberated many years, they still carry an enslaved mentality. They have been liberated from slavery many years ago. But some of our black people in the United States, the United Kingdom, some great grandfathers were liberated. But you know, like, like now scientists have proved genetically, epigenetics, right? They've proved that actually genes, eh? what, your genes, you, you, can, you can literally pass on a certain character in your DNA. If you're a worrisome person, you can pass on worry in your child. Scientifically, it has been proved. You understand? 
it has been proved that DNA can adopt and mutate to an individual, create a certain idea of this individual, and it is passed into a child. I see the faith that was in your grandmother, Lois. The faith that was in your mother, Eunice. And he says, and that same faith is in you also. That's why the blessing of God is for a thousand generations. You can't serve God and your children become funny. No. There's something you're doing in their DNA right now. The father of my mother was a preacher. How could I not preach? You understand? What I, the slave is a survivor. He's not an innovator. He's not an inventor. He cannot live beyond self. When you're a believer and you can't tithe, you're, it's your slave. You're a slave. Because you mean to say that that 10,000 you've remained with is your God. It's your survival. Do you understand what I'm saying? How can I release my first fruit? What will I eat for the month? Who is your source? Who is your source? I'm free. For who saw the sun sets free? He is free indeed. Somebody shout hallelujah. I love Paul. That was a free man. I know how to be full. I know how to abound. And I know how to have nothing. In every place. <laughs> Throw him anywhere. He will survive. Because he's beyond that life. He's, he says the earth is disquieted. It's, it cannot bear a slave mentality. When it's raining. When it's, it has a blessing on itself. That means, as you say, oh, oh, uh, as, as sin and death reign through one man's soul, much more they which receive the free gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace shall reign in this one man, Christ. When you say we are reigning as kings, you understand, the mentality of slavery has to die. Because it means you're like a child. You're immature. You're not yet mature. He says as a child, even though he be heir of all, the Bible says, he differeth not from a slave, although he is the master of all, but he is under guardians and administrators or trustees until the debt fixed by his father. The Amplified tells you in the next verse, he says, even we, Jewish Christians, now Paul is talking about Galatians, when we were minors, we were kept slaves under the rules of the Hebrew ritual and subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observations and regulations. Don't do this. Don't do that. You see the diverse washings, the diverse drinkings, the all cleansings, the things that are without, but the holy of holies, the highest level of the presence of God was not a revelation for them. And because of that, even though they had a worship of God, they were enslaved in their personal lives. They were like slaves on earth. They were rich, but they were poor. They were blessed, but they looked cursed. They were, it, it's my God. Who is understanding what I'm trying to say? He has promised that we shall eat of the good of the land. Isaiah 45 verses 18 tells you, God created the heavens and he himself from the earth and he made it and he has established it and he created it not in vain. Did you hear that? He formed it to be inhabited. He says, I'm the Lord and there is none else. Now, when the Bible says he created not the earth in vain, you remember when the Bible says in Genesis and the earth was, was, was void and, and, and empty and void? Tohu vabohu. It's the same word here in, in Psalms. I have not created the world in, in tohu vabohu. I, the earth was not empty and formless and void like you found it in Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is not the beginning of the world. The first book that accounts the beginning of the world is John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and it says and all things were made by him and without him nothing was made and the Bible says and in him was life and the life was the light and that light it shines in darkness and darkness comprehended him not pastors you see that's the beginning the real beginning is in john by account it's clear that genesis in genesis satan had already fallen so he messed up the earth 
There's thousands before that event which Moses sees. In other words, God doesn't begin from the bad and then makes good. No, he begins from the good and perfect. Satan messes it up. And when he messes it up, God comes in again and straightens it up. Diotosis, reformation. Holy of holies was not an idea of God simply keeping men away from the presence. And then later, an event happens where he shows them the presence. No, the presence was a revelation even before the law. Abraham encountered God before the law. Moses saw God face to face even before the law was given to him. Do you understand? Let me explain what I mean. For example, when the Bible says in, in Revelation that behold the Lamb of God which was slain for the, from the foundation of the earth. The plans of God are perfect from beginning. Are you hearing me? Somehow in the middle, Satan messes up and our, even our own selves sometimes in what we do. The place of reformation is to correct and put a man back to normalcy, back to normal. Like I said, the orthosis. Some people think, you see, miracles in the regenerated life are supposed to be normal experiences. Being rich is supposed to be normal. So just take a much Do you understand what I'm saying? Being a blessed being is supposed to be a normal condition of a new creature. Being wise is a normal experience of a new creature. Some people say, oh, you know, uh, before I knew God, I, I used to fail in class. But when I knew Jesus, I became wise. No, the manifestation of wisdom came when you knew Christ. But that wisdom was there the moment you received him. It was not just yet active. It was not yet unveiled, apocalypsis, with understanding to be attached to purpose for it to manifest. Some people seek a manifestation without divine purpose. That's called lust. That's asking a miss. He says, don't expect to receive anything from God. Don't ask a miss. Asking a miss is consuming on lust. It's when you begin from asking God, but you're beginning from a carnal, fleshly understanding of everything you need. God, I want a car for what? So that even me, they can see me driving. No. Tell him, God, I want a very nice car. Very, very nice car. As a tool of the gospel. Ding. Praise God. <laughs> Preach. So you don't sit in and say, oh, the Namara. No. You know it is God in it. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's when I realized that when they're talking about this babe in Galatians, who does not know? Who does not understand? Remember the earth is disquieted. It is the foundations are out of form and shape with men who carry a reigning grace but are still enslaved in their minds. You understand? It's the same thing when he says that the earth is out of its foundations for they neither understand, neither do they walk in light but in darkness. And the Bible says, I have said that ye are gods. And all of ye, he says, are children of the Most High. But he says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes of the world. In other words, I've made you this big. But you'll die this small. Because you've disquieted the earth. It has lost its foundations. It's the same, same word there. For the earth losing its foundation. And it cannot bear. Why? Because you're entering the blessing and mind of God of reigning with a slave mentality. Don't enter the life of salvation with a slave mentality. Don't listen to a sermon that enslaves you. Oh, you have a demon of your grandfather. You have a generational curse. Then you, you come with the mind that there's a demon already pursuing you. You understand? Some people are so enslaved. Every time you listen to the word, you're supposed to be hearing the possibilities of this life. Hallelujah. Setting men free begins from showing you the reality of your freedom in Christ. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of the things freely given to us by God. That means that the true experience of the Holy Spirit tells you free access. Free access in his blessing. Free access in divine health. Anything that is contrary to the working of the Spirit is not supposed to be entering your DNA. But we still have people who have not yet known the difference. When we tell you grace and law, we know what we are telling you. The Bible says the letter killeth. 
But the spirit gives us life. The message of grace. Some, oh, it's there to make people sin. Are you sinning more? Answer me, are you sinning more? We are telling men that there's a difference between you embracing the grace of God and the law of Moses. And he has told you that this letter kills. Because the law produces priests with infirmity. The Bible says in Hebrews, you will never be perfected by the law. He says, for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the hills who is consecrated forevermore. It makes the spiritually mature who is consecrated forevermore. When you transition from the law and grace, you have matured. That is why again in Hebrews 5, he says that some are still babes unable to take meat and so they drink milk they just take milk because the bible says for they are unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness they don't understand that the righteousness you have in god is free and it's imputed on you by faith you're living this life of if i do this god will do that if i don't do this god won't do this if i do this no free yourself that's slavery the bible says it's not what we are doing no, it is what God is doing. God is not responding to your prayer. It is finished. Before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. God is, you're not going to pray and then he hears you now. No, he had you long ago in Christ. There is nothing you're going to ask that he didn't know you're going to ask for and he had not provided for. That is why we say with thanksgiving, make your request. He didn't say request and thank, no. He says with thanksgiving make your request. Why do you thanksgive making your request? Because you know that all things in Christ are yea and amen to the glory of the Father. I know that he will not withhold any good thing from you. Reform in your spirit. Don't carry mentality of a slave. Some of you come to the presence of God to beg what he already gave you. If he has said I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness, why are you asking? If he say, I have given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain to life and godliness. Why are you still asking? Why are you begging for a job? That's a slave. Master, can I drink some water in the fridge? No, no. Leave the, the water is for Apostle Grace, the son. <laughs> okay, put your name. But you understand what I'm saying? You are sons. But you see, he says, blessed with every spiritual given everything that pertains to life and godliness through the epignosis the knowledge of him as you continue to know god you realize that what you're believing god for has already been given to you Woo! Woo! do you understand what i just said i'm not poor have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness i receive as a son i walk into that house of God and I see everything I want and I pick it because I know it is mine and I don't worry that he's going to question and say why have you picked what I didn't give you no that's a slave I'm a son in the house don't plead for healing he says it's the children's if he healed a woman a Syrophoenician woman he said healing is a children's bread. You shall not toss that which is for children to the dogs. And the woman says, but even the dogs, the, go, Jesus called it great faith. Th this woman was a woman out of the covenant and she got healing. If a woman out of a covenant, if God can heal a dog, what about a son? You remember when he was talking to Jonah? The Bible says in the story of Jonah, he asked him, shouldn't I have mercy on those people who know not how to go in and go out even their cattle as in God was so concerned about the people of Nineveh that he even felt sorry to kill their cattle the message of that he says should I not he says why so why can't I likewise change what I feel about Nineveh from anger to pleasure this big city for more than a hundred and twenty thousand childlike people who don't know yet right from wrong to say nothing at all and uh, sorry, to say nothing of all the innocent animals. God even didn't want to kill animals. He, he felt like, if God can feel sorry when, a, when an innocent animal has died because of a sin of a man, how 
much more you. How do you think he feels when you're going through trouble? Stop having a slave mentality. Everything in God is free for you. No. Everything in God is free for you. That's why Paul asks them, why do you act as though you were not given? Some people get blessed and they change. You're still enslaved. Now you feel you're liberated from your fellow slaves. No. 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 I know some of you still quote Old Testament dispensation, reformation. They get you from the poor and makes you to sit with princes and then you think you're not a prince. <laughs> no, that is Old Testament. You're a child of the Most High. You're now among the people whom those ones who get born again sit among. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm royalty. I know who I am. I know what God has spoken on my life and I will not settle for less in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Thosis, do it the right way. Find it normal to have money. Find it normal to get married. Find it normal to have a wonderful family. Don't get shocked when you have a, a, a jet. You understand? No, oh my God, I can't believe it. No, 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 no. That is for people in the world. They can't believe it. For us, we believe it. Somebody one time asked, one time I got some so nice and somebody told me, uh -huh, how are you feeling? And I told him, no more. I got some so nice and they asked me, huh? you must be excited. I told him, you don't get it. These things are supposed to be mine. How can I be excited of what is supposed already to be mine? That is enslavement. That's slavery. That's, that's why I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve this house, but you gave it to me. Who, who am I? <laughs> we even used to sing it back in those days. <laughs> ah, tell your neighbor, I'm a new creation in Christ. For we know the grace of our Lord. For though he was rich, but made himself poor, that through his poverty you might be rich. Don't don't be apologetic for having money. Hey, hallelujah. Don't be sorry for driving a nice car and living in a nice house. Hey, we win souls too. We cast out devils and we are preparing men for heaven. No. Tell your neighbor I refuse. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's normal to be blessed. It's normal to have good children. It's normal to have very wise children. It's normal to excel in your exams. It is normal to go above and up and not beneath, to be the head and not the tail. It is normal. They say, oh my God, we can't believe you made it. So no, no, you have to believe it because this is the God-designed life. He prearranged me for a good life. So normal status of Christian, success, increase, glory, divine health, multiplication, Lines falling in pleasant places, parts dropping with greatness, blessed going in, blessed going out, planting vineyards, eating thereof, building houses, living there. Your children shall not be snatched from under thee. So ten shall fall on one side and ten thousand on the other side. But he says, But none of those things shall in any means harm you. And he says, Only a spectator, far from rich, shall you see the reward of the wicked. He will order your steps, he aligns you to purpose and cause. You are going every day, you're increasing. And it is no more. It's your portion in Christ. It's your portion in Christ. Stop thinking you don't deserve great. Some of you look back, oh God, I've messed up to deserve this. No. Listen, Jesus died for you to deserve it. Oh God, I don't think I deserve a good this. I don't think I deserve a good husband. I don't think I deserve a good wife. With everything I've done, God, I don't deserve a nice car. I don't deserve, oh, I am so bad. No, listen, he's not blessing you because of what you have done. You are his workmanship, created and two good works for which you were pre-arranged, pre-ordained before time that you might live this good life. I'm not sorry for being a success. I have to be a success. If you have things to deal with, God will deal them with you. He'll remove all that nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? And then even as he's removing that nonsense, you're walking in glory. But refuse to be enslaved. Refuse to be enslaved. 
You deserve the best in this life, in this world. Why? If the Bible says, he says, if he never held back his only son. If he did not withhold his only son, but delivered him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us? Message version, message version. He says, if God didn't hesitate to put everything, listen, everything online for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for you? If he did not deny you Christ, why do you think he will deny you success? Renew your mind. Renew your mind, child of God. Freely, graciously. And I want you to listen to this. And this I speak in the authority I've been given tonight to speak. You will not walk with an enslaved mentality again. It is not your portion to walk enslaved in this life. Banange, people suffer. People go through things. But you will not be a fugitive on this earth. You will not be a vagabond on this earth. You are a child of the Most High God. Your life has meaning and God has plans to make you prosper, not to harm you, to give you a future and hope that expected end. You were not called to suffer. You were not called for sword. You were not called for struggle. God has called you to victory and glory. I want you to raise your hands and just speak. Because you're with me. Come on, speak some words. Speak like a son of God. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. I shall not fear. Because you're for me. Because you're for me. Because you're for me. I will not My hiding place, my self refuge, my shelter, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. God is delivering somebody. God is delivering somebody. God is delivering somebody. There's an anointing that I see. It's coming on some people to separate. Listen. Oh God, I don't have words to say what I see. But may the Spirit confirm it right now. Because you're with me Because you're with me Because you're with me I will not fear there are people here whose hands have been struggling. And 
and I, I see shackles breaking off hands right now. Power of the Holy Ghost! There are people whose feet have been struggling. A sort of boundary and limitation on your house, on your life. It's like everything you've touched has died in your hands. I came for you today to tell you that this is the last time you bury something in your hands. This is the last time blood is shed. This is the last time things die with you. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus that success is yours. You see, there's a very strong thing I see a very strong presence breaking people's hands free you've been looking for jobs they are going to come come on girls your business has died, they are going to leave. Some of you, you started projects and they died so early. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I release the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to set you free. For who saw the sun sets free? It's free indeed. Now, every form of witchcraft on this ground, you're hearing me right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever spirit was spoken on somebody and he was saying they will never succeed. They will never go ahead. Oh, no, 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 graveyards, whatever it is. I decree in the name of Jesus that God delivers you. You will not struggle. You will not strive. You are a king. Your royalty, you're the prince and princess of the most high, and your mind is delivered. These things are free. Reach out for them, lambano them, receive them in your spirit. Don't be sorry and apologetic for what God has given you. He says he will freely give you and lavishly all these things because he gave you Jesus. You did not come in this world to struggle and suffer, and you will not struggle and suffer in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. God delivers somebody. Forget that you're in a third world country. You're a child of God. You'll be a success. It doesn't matter how many books you have and how much you've lost. These things are freely given to you. Reform your mind. Wake up every morning and say those words and say all things are mine. He says whether Paul or Apollos, whether Kephas, things present or things to come. He says all are yours and your Christ's. Your Christ's. Now if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. These things are they don't make sense if you don't have him. So if you're here and today and you're saying, you know what, I want that man. I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come here right now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Come, come. You're going to repeat these words after me, okay? Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me. And you were raised for my glory. So I bless you tonight that I've received you for the rest of my life. I'm born again. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com you can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still feel free to join us every thursday for our weekly fellowships at uma multipurpose hall from 5 p.m to 8 p.m you can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash fenero fenero make manifest